Here's the live-action Star Wars universe explained. Star Wars is one of the few long-running franchises that has managed to go without being rebooted or remade since the 70s, and they're able to do that because they continuously expand upon the universe. So let's take a look at that chronological viewing order of the whole world. I've got a bad feeling about this. We're going to start with arguably the worst, The Phantom Menace. For this one, George Lucas took us back to the beginning and showed us a story of a young Obi-Wan and an even younger Anakin Skywalker. Up next is Attack of the Clones, and this one is also bottom of the barrel Star Wars for most fans. This sees Anakin a little bit older and a little bit whinier. Finishing up the prequel trilogy was Revenge of the Sith, and this one was solid. This is the best of the prequel trilogy if you ask any self-respecting Star Wars fan. This shows Anakin as he finally starts to move to the dark side and become Darth Vader, the greatest cinematic villain to ever exist. Moving past the Star Wars prequel series, we come to Solo, A Star Wars Story, and this is the prequel spinoff that nobody asked for, an origin story that nobody wanted, and yet it's still kind of fun. Not very beloved by the fans, but entertaining enough. Here we have one of the Star Wars spin-off series that went to Disney+, Plus, Obi-Wan. This told the story of Obi-Wan Kenobi after, after the events of Episode 3, and people were very excited for this, yet it's still considered kind of mid-tier Star Wars. After Obi-Wan, we have another Disney Plus series with Andor. Now this one was much better received for its darker tones, darker themes, it's more along the lines of Blade Runner than Star Wars, and it fits right in. Moving on, we come to Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Now, this one acts as a sequel to Andor and a prequel to Episode 4, A New Hope. This one is kind of unique because it takes place right at the beginning of A New Hope and even kind of overlaps with that film while telling a different story. Here we are, Episode 4, A New Hope, the one that started it all, the original, the classic, and one of the absolute bests. And speaking of the bests, here is The Empire Strikes Back. This one is widely considered pinnacle Star Wars, the peak, the best. And capping the original trilogy, we have Return of the Jedi, originally going to be titled Revenge of the Jedi, which shows Luke Skywalker totally embracing his full Jedi powers. Now we're back into the Disney Plus series here with The Mandalorian, a Western Star Wars series that everybody has loved, and it gave us Baby Yoda, it gave us Grogu, so how could you not? Following up The Mandalorian is Boba Fett, a weaker series that told the story of that bounty hunter that everybody was obsessed with, mainly because he just had some cool armor. We're nearing the end here as we move into the sequel trilogy with the first entry, The Force Awakens. Now this one was a lot of fun, but it is critiqued for being pretty much a retelling of A New Hope. After that, we have the most divisive Star Wars entry in the entire franchise, and that is The Last Jedi, loved by some and hated by many. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, to cap it off to complete this chronological order viewing is The Rise of Skywalker, the finale to the sequel trilogy, and the finale to the Skywalker saga, if we're to believe them. So that's it. That is the entire chronological viewing order for the live-action Star Wars. Now, there are plenty of animated Star Wars, but we will hit those in another video. Be sure to drop us a follow on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and stay tuned for more great content.